Andini Makazinski is a Renaissance woman, an inventor, a writer, a speaker, a host, and the CEO of Macatronics Enterprises. She might be best known for some of the sustainability-focused inventions that she created as a teen, including the hollow flashlight, a flashlight that runs off the heat of your hand, and the e-drink, a coffee mug that produces electricity off the excess heat of your hot drink. More than a decade passed her inventions that brought her media attention, including an appearance on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, and Dini is finding her own voice in STEM, and sharing her unique perspective as someone who is equal parts artist, creative thinker, and STEM enthusiast. In this interview, we sit down with Andini to discover how she's forging her own path and carrying on the legacy of fellow Canadian STEM trailblazer and subject of our newest coin, Elsie McGill. Here's our interview with Andini Makazinski. Hi, my name is Andini Makazinski. I'm a 25 year old Filipino Polish Canadian inventor, writer, host, speaker, um, so many different things. Why I call myself a Renaissance woman probably is because I don't think the things I gravitate towards fit within just STEM or just the arts. Um, I've always had a deep love and appreciation for film, for storytelling, um, for writing, acting, all these different things. And I've also liked inventing and tinkering and making things with my hands. So. I kind of wanted to do all of them. I didn't feel like I fit into the label of being an engineer. And if anything, the pressure that I felt at home as a teenager that I should do this uh, made me kind of run in the other direction. Um, so yeah, I have many different passions in the sciences and the arts. And I think I just want to try and do all of them or combine them in unique ways while I'm alive and able to do so. Leonardo da Vinci is a great example of someone who was an incredible painter and also an engineer and inventor. And he was celebrated for both of those things that he loved to do. And I hope that society can get to a place where we stop putting people into these boxes and labels of, oh, he's a lawyer. And then you go, oh, I understand what that is. I was offered an engineering scholarship in grade 12 as I was, you know, applying and looking at different universities. And it was a very difficult decision, but I truly did not feel like it would be true to myself and the things that I loved if I did that. And I feel really lucky to have gotten my degree in English Literature and Film Studies because I had so much fun and a lot of people don't have fun in university and I'm like, there's something wrong with that. Like learning, obviously it's difficult when you're memorizing and learning things, but a lot of it should be fun. You should be excited about what you're learning. And I feel very happy that even then when I was 17, you don't know much when you're 17, like everybody's still figuring it out. Like I still went. I'm going to stay true to what I've always wanted to do since I was a kid, which is to go towards film and um, started studying English literature so I could learn about storytelling. Um, and you know, outside of school, I was still having my own company, getting patents for my inventions in North America, um, continuing to invent and speak everywhere. So I was able to have this really fun balance of science and art that at that time I really enjoyed. I think the whole world around us is an incredible combination of science and art. I mean, you can look down at your phone right now. It's this incredible thing where the science, the technology, the interface uh, has come together. Uh, but we also expect our tech to be aesthetically pleasing, to be part of our fashion in some way. We don't carry around the same clunky phones from the 90s that we once, well, I was a baby, I didn't, but that other people did. So I think there's just science and art all around us. Just people have chosen to, understand things on a more simpler base level of this is technology, this is art, and there's no in between. Um, and I think that's a real shame because what's happening when we do that in the educational system is we're discouraging a lot of potential for creativity within students. A big problem with the way those subjects are taught right now is not a lot of young people are seeing the easy way these can actually cross over um, and that you need designers, you need artists, you need people who can design and, and, and 3D model to come together with the scientists and the technologists to make something really incredible.
totally am all for, you know, the movement of getting more girls in STEM or STEAM. Um, but when I was younger and doing science fair projects on my own, I had no idea about any of that. And I actually think my obliviousness um, to the whole problem that there weren't enough girls doing science um, made me just kind of go out there and do my thing. So I think there needs to be like a some sort of balance of like, yes, we want more young women involved in STEAM, but how can we do it in a way where they don't feel singled out um, and pointed out and, and instead just celebrated for being part of it and doing cool stuff. Elsie McGill seemed like an incredible individual who fearlessly went after all the different passions and things that she loved to do, um, which can be sometimes quite difficult to do. So yeah, I think Elsie's story is, you know, the first Canadian female engineer in general is just kind of incredible. You know, I can't even imagine the types of reactions and barriers she had to go through um, as she was studying and getting her degree and then further on in her career really fighting for women's rights um, is just incredible. So yeah, I'm in, in total admiration of all these different things that she accomplished because again, like I said earlier, you know, to have a passion, you have to be really brave about it, especially if you have multiple different passions. You have to boldly announce to the world, I love this thing and I'm pursuing it and I don't care if what you think I'm producing from it is good or bad, I'm just going to do it because I love it. And that can be a very scary thing and the fact that Elsie did that at such a time when there were literally no other women doing engineering in Canada is just amazing.